Here was the verdict of the trial. Mohsen Amin was found guilty and two of Yasser's friends were found not guilty. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone who has supported us throughout so far and also a big thank you to the jury who have been so considerate and uh, took everything into account and brought a right decision. Um, David Butlin and uh, Arapaj have been on bail for two years. They didn't only just kill my son on that day, but they destroyed the lives of two innocent people who had nothing to do with anything whatsoever. And I am so pleased that they have been found not guilty. Uh, during the trial, I've learned a lot. Things which we didn't know. IOPC has never told us much about this case. And it was very vital and important that I personally attended and to learn myself. During this trial, I've learned that there was no DNA forensics, uh, fingerprints of Yasser or anybody whatsoever. Bearing in mind, the vehicle was driven, hired by Mr. Amin, and it was insured by him. He used his own details. Yasser only joined him from Ainley Top to go to Bradford to see someone because there was money owed for a car. We've had a car business for many years and we sold high performance cars. So there is no doubt about that whatsoever. And um, during that trial, it's now 100% that the items, exhibits were tampered with by someone who the police in charge has admitted but could not identify who. For example, Yasser's man bag had been uh, tampered with, the lining of his man bag was pulled out and a glove shoved in which was not there before. And uh, there were no forensics and fingerprints of anyone in there but gun residue was found in that bag which matched the firearm officers. So this is very serious, you know, tampering with the evidence uh, which you will later rely on. And uh, the police uh, had no body cameras on that day. So I wonder why, because if you are attending a pre-planned operation and the police maintain that they knew what was happening, why did they not make arrangements to have body cameras put on? At least something could have been told to the family members that this is what happened. Anyway, um, the police in charge has admitted on many occasions that many things, even things in the glove compartment were moved about and no DNA forensics or fingerprints were found at all on anything in that car of Yasser. Police killed uh, Yasser and two people was put on bail for near almost two years. They didn't only just uh, cause uh, pain to the family, but two other innocent people throughout, regardless of CPS telling the police to release these two people, no charge. I have seen those documents and with my own eyes, the police were not going to charge Mr. Arapaj or, or Mr. Butlin, but they changed their mind and I'd like to know what new evidence they had for that. So um, the police officer who shot Yasser V39, they call him, is the only person that says that he saw Yasser with a gun. He had to say that because otherwise he would have been in for murder immediately. No other officer in that vehicle has said that Yasser had a gun in his hand. Mr. Amin has clearly said in his prepared statement, Yasser did not brandish a gun, Yasser did not show a gun, Yasser posed no threats whatsoever, and the police gave no warnings whatsoever. And uh, <clears throat> Mr. Amin, on the day of trial, uh, made a new statement which the prosecution says he invented to cast his guilt other, other way. 
Uh, I think Mr. Amin was very ill-advised by his counsel and if he had told the truth, like the others did, perhaps the decision could have been different for him as well. But that was his own decision. The jury asked about more than 10 questions throughout the trial. And one of the questions was, could the police have planted the gun in the car? Now, when jury starts thinking like that, one has to wonder why, what sort of evidence is there clearly showed it wasn't Yasser who had the gun because they wouldn't even think about it down that route. Um, the, the police officer who shot Yasser is supposed to be relieved from his duties immediately. That is their own policy, police policy. But he continued to stay there and he is the person who says he's seen a gun under the seat, actually under the seat, not actually where your feet are. So the position of the gun could never be there if Yasser had been shot, he wouldn't have had the time or nothing. Um, and the statements the police uh, gave or read out in court uh, seemed to have been rehearsed by all of them as to same, but contradicting each other to a certain extent. Uh, and it was only V39 has maintained throughout that he saw a gun in Yasser's hand. No one saw the gun. And we now uh, aim to take this matter further. And our case only begins from now onwards. Now that we know everything as clear as a day that what went on on that 2nd of January and what other internal information they had which has all been revealed in the court and my barristers are working very hard and we will be taking this matter right till to the end i cannot and i will not give up and i would like to thank everyone for their support please remember is in your prayers